All right, folks, we are live. I'm your host, Dash V, and uh, with me today I have... Miss Lizzie Hedgehog, still song is, you know, sweetheart girl. And this guy over here won't shut up. What's your problem? J Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. I want to be the first to say to you live in front of everyone, I am so... I'm so incredibly sorry for your loss, man. I, I, I heard I heard about the Ace Combat 7 getting delayed, and and I'm just, I'm terribly sorry. I know how much it means to you. I don't think it's worth living anymore until 2018. Oh, wait, well, well, see, here's here's the conundrum, though. You, you have to keep living, otherwise, you have to make it to 2018 in order for you to enjoy the game, my friend. So just 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 tough it out. I, I'm sure I'm sure you can make it. I should get frozen until 2018, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, you do like wayward pines, right, and have them cryogenically freeze you until exactly. until twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen, rather. And then Isn't you. Isn't that what happened uh, to Disney? To Walt Disney? Yeah, he's cryogenically frozen. I think. Dude, are you serious? I think I think really is. I'm gonna have to look that up after the show. My goodness. So so in the chat, guys. Today we have a Lotus token, and we have a uh, Troy from GB Land. So. Hey guys, um, thanks. I'll refer. I, I assume that by sexy bitches they mean me. So. But thank I you got very the much. Cool Sonic shirt. Oh, that is true. But I, I wasn't going to use the B word though to describe you. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, don't want to create a, a a hostile chat environment. Mhm. Mm so we already got. Are, are you doing all right, Jeremy? How how, how are you doing with the news of the? Uh, of, are, are you surprised, I guess, first of all? Surprised? Not really. Did it ruin my day when I found this one? Yeah. <laughs> it really ruined my day. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. There's nothing like really looking forward to a game and then finding out that it's going to be, you know, delayed. I think a lot of us felt that when Breath of the Wild, right, got delayed and delayed and delayed. Um, and now that it's out, you know, I think, you know, uh, I definitely think it was worth the wait. It's, it's a good game. Um, but it still didn't make it sting anymore when it kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. So yeah. I, to, to, if it gives you any consolation, my friend, you're waiting for a better game. Toss says, man, if you're going to send me a edition for all these mm. bullshit, I look clear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you delayed the game by a year. Now Jeremy must get it for free. That's the way I promote the damn game. That's, that's, the, way, <laughs> that's the way that this works, right? <laughs> That's what I would do. You better yeah. give it to me. I don't want long enough. <laughs> so Troy, Troy made sure to qualify. He said, "Bitches is a term of endearment." So he goes, "So if the shoe fits, lace that shit up and wear it." I guess I'll be wearing it today. Aren't so I? and and with that, we've officially discarded the G rating for today's show. So we're uh, now, I think, officially at the PG thirteen. We'll try to. We'll see if we can keep the F bomb out of it. We'll we'll, we'll try to hover at that. That PG thirteen rating for I'll today. Drop it at the end. <laughs> well, if we didn't drop it with the news of Ace Combat Seven, um, I think as long as we don't talk about uh, about the one hit kills in uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, we'll be okay. There's what? <laughs> the one hit kills in Breath too, of the Wild. Too many one hit kills in Breath of the Wild. Still. Um, so other stuff in the news today. Um, there's a SNES style Harvest Moon game coming to Nintendo Switch. Did you guys read about that? Oh, yeah, dude, I love them. Actually, There's a what? Moon. There's a Super Nintendo-style uh, Harvest Moon coming to Nintendo Switch. No, I didn't know about that one. Okay, so yeah, Lizzie, awesome. Awesome. it's awesome. Tell, awesome. Us, tell us a bit about the game, Jeremy. What What is the game? I, I've I, only I, played like one, maybe two of them, but um, yeah. you pretty much, uh, you got to cut like maybe five years, you know, it's going to be fun as I played. And you got pretty much grow a farm, so you got crops, and you get animals, and you got, you know, Build the, the barns to raise the sheep, or build the barns to raise the chickens. Isn't and this Farmville on Facebook? No, this is more than Farmville. This is you know your top-down vision, and you know you you gotta check the barn, you know you know break stumps and things like that. Yeah, and Three if anything, things. if anything, Farmville's inspired by uh, Harvest Moon because yeah. Harvest Moon came out first. I mean, it's one of those games you can play for years, pretty much. Gotcha. It's, it's, it takes forever to beat. It, it sounds like, I, you know what, I, I would have been shocked that you're a fan of this game before, but now n knowing, you know, in the last year, knowing how much you enjoy uh, some of the other games like Animal Crossing and everything, I'm not, I'm not surprised that, that you enjoy this game, so. 
Yeah. Uh, so I'm definitely probably going to get it because I enjoyed the other ones before. Yeah. So um, in other news today, also Sega is also planning a revival of some of its major franchises, but it hasn't provided any details other than major franchises. So we can speculate what that thing, what we think that means. Uh, that might mean games like uh, the Streets of Rage games, maybe Eternal Champions uh, coming back. Uh, certainly they're already bringing, you know, doing quite a bit with Sonic. Uh, Lizzie, you can give us an update on Sonic Forces, right? I guess so. Okay. So earlier today, the official Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter page showed a little trailer for the new Sonic Forces game. And apparently, all rumors were right. Yay! You get to make your own character. You can choose between, I remember it was a wolf, a cat, a bird, a bunny, I believe a hedgehog too, but the screenshots I saw and what I was paying attention to, I don't remember seeing a hedgehog. But in the trailer, they're showing a custom-made fox, and you can put glasses on him. You can put the uh, Dragon Ball Z scouter on him. You can oh, put different kind of gloves. You know, different shoes on him, different gloves. I mean, you. I mean, you really get to customize this character, and this character, and this character, um, basically runs aside. You know, uh, both Sonic. So you basically are in the game now. It's your own OC. A lot of people are really happy. Uh, DVD and art is really excited because you know your your original character is not gonna be in the game. A lot of people are really happy about this game. I'm still not sure I will actually buy it because it's not coming out till holiday. So between now and holiday time, I'll make my my, my final decision. But you know. For me personally, I don't want to deal with the whole entire making my own character because I've seen things like War of Warcraft and all that other stuff where people spend days, hours, weeks, and even months just Years, building yeah. a character. So it's like, are you actually going to play this game or are you going to waste all your time trying to do the perfect character to to outdo Sonic or try to you know outdo some person online that has six new OC characters and you want yours to be better than theirs, you know? I'm not entirely sure what to think. I don't know if it's, gonna, if it's a good thing, if it's a bad thing. It's just based on the way I've seen this fandom is they're more interested in outdoing someone else and having the perfect character. Are they actually gotcha. going to play the game is another question. That's my yeah. thing. So happy, not happy. I'm kind of neutral in between because my heart is still set on Sonic Mania. That's gotcha. the game I want. Sonic yeah. Forces. I guess it, what's interesting is that, you know, it looks like Sega's taking an approach where, like, they're trying to give folks that want the nostalgia, right? They want to take a stroll down memory lane, but reload it. Um, mm -hmm. See what I did there? Um, <laughs> but they want to take a stroll down memory lane, reload it, and, and you're going to get that with Sonic Mania. But then they know that there's folks out there that, you know, the, the, the demographic has, has shifted for who's the, the primarily driving gaming dollars now. And a lot of that is this massively multiplayer online experiences and stuff. And so, you know, they're trying to offer that with some of their IPs. So I think I think you're right. It'll remain to be seen. You know, will Sonic Mania bring on the nostalgia, but then lack for customers? Uh, will Sonic Forces bring on the customers, but then really lack in, like, original and engaging experiences? We don't really know. Hopefully, both of them smash it out of the park with their respective audiences, and then everybody benefits because the IP remains strong for Sega. And I think as long as the IP remains strong, you're going to see Sega keep taking swings at it. And not every one of those has to be a home run, but they can't all be, you know, they can't all be bunts either. They have to, they have to make some, some chance, take some chances and they have to gain some ground with these IPs or, you know, they're going to have to lock them back up. Mega Man has tried repeatedly to come back and cash in on the nostalgia and it's repeatedly just underperformed. So um, it, it's kind of a heartbreaker. Uh, when you see what the prices of the original Mega Man games, you know, fetch for the Nintendo Entertainment System on eBay, and then, you know, Capcom is struggling to sell a collection with all of them for the PlayStation 4. It, it just doesn't, it, it, it doesn't make sense. So, um, so we'll see if Sega has better luck. Other IPs that we might maybe see them bring back as part of this revival of old IPs, maybe we'll see Echo the Dolphin. Um, it was great on Sega... Ooh. Sega, Sega CD. Um, also, the Dreamcast version was absolutely spectacular. It was one of the best-looking Dreamcast games. So uh, Lotus was asking us what our thoughts were on the Dreamcast scene. 
Um, I love the homebrew scene. I love some of the games for the original uh, Sega Dreamcast, like uh, Echo the Dolphin. Um, one of the things that I think was sorely missing on the Dreamcast was, you know, a, a, at that time, you know, next gen version of Streets of Rage. I, could, I think that they could have done an amazing Dreamcast Streets of Rage game. So maybe we'll see a Streets of Rage game on the current gen consoles. I think um, if it was uh, anywhere near as good as Double Dragon Neon was, which in my opinion was a friggin' masterpiece, I, I think it could be really, really good and it could be, uh, you know, what Sega needs. Yeah, well, for, for me especially, I mean, I never got to play the Dreamcast games because where I lived, back in the day, it's the suburbs, and it was mostly just trees and bushes. I mean, not the country, but, like, they didn't really bring that many Sega Dreamcast consoles on the Saturn either over here. And when they did, they went quickly. So unless you were, you were the parents of rich parents, you know, you couldn't really get it. So all I had was my Sega Genesis <laughs> which I played until it died. But I have a new one, but it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> you, had it, you had it resurrected. <laughs> yes, yes, it's staying over there in my little mini Sega museum over there. Nice. Also, um, I don't know if they can see it. Um, probably not. But uh, behind me, where is it? Right there is actually a Sega Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. And right there is actually the Sega Dreamcast controller. So, um, quite a I quite a fan them. of it. Yeah, so. I have them over there. They're in the little museum. Then I got the games over here, and somewhere somewhere behind me in that Sonic collection is the Dreamcast Sonic plushie. So, Lizzie, what what would you think about what would you think about if so, uh, if Sega brought back Toe Jam and Earl? <laughs> I would love it. Oh my gosh, I would love it. I would love it. In fact. I went to that gaming convention and I found the original in the box. You got that. Very nice. Yes. And I'm looking forward to the second one. I'm really excited for the third one coming soon. So, yes, I would love to see that. Yeah. Lister's Mate says uh, that he thinks that the problem with Mega Man is that generations, uh, since it, the many generations now that we have removed from when it first came out. Um, most people now, except for the people that are, I'm paraphrasing slightly what he said, but he's, he's basically stating that the mass, uh, the majority of people now versus the people remaining that have nostalgia for it, there's, there's more people now that just have no clue what Mega Man is. Like, unless you were around in Mega Man's era. And I think, I think for the most part, he's right. I don't think Capcom historically has capitalized on Mega Man as, as a brand and as a character quite as much as Sega has on Sonic. I mean, even when there weren't Sonic games, you know, merchandising, and I blame, I blame lovingly. <laughs> I blame Tom for this. You know, he, he was good at, at merchandising, definitely. Um, and he talked about that, you know, in some detail on our show uh, last year. Um, you know, Sega definitely, you know, through, you know, shirts, through hats, through plushies. Lizzie, you can tell <laughs> us a bit about the plushies, right? <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah, I can. <laughs> Sega has pumped a lot of money into keeping Sonic kind of in the forefront of culture. So there are people that know Sonic and recognize Sonic that have never even played the games. But but they'll recognize mm -hmm. him as a character. They've seen his cartoon shows, that kind of thing. So I, I agree, Lister. You might be right on there that maybe the challenge for Mega Man is just that it's never really been that iconic uh, and that, um, you know, that prevalent of, of a brand out there in people's faces. So you take away the but games. But they're trying to. I mean, you've got that new cartoon coming, so. I think that will help. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I think that that's going to help. Um, Turf says there's a ton of great Sega IP, so Turf, go ahead and throw them out there. He already gave us one. He said Panzer Dragoon. Yeah, that would be pretty cool to see come back. Um, Panzer Dragoon. That's another game that fetches, like, ridiculous amounts of money uh, nowadays if you try to buy uh, used copies. Um, but... Yeah, there's also let's see, well, <laughs> Crazy Taxi, what? He, he hopes to everything good and holy that they're not bringing back Alex Kidd. Why not? What That's the heck, game. man? So, I, I, I don't know. I didn't really have any problems with that game, but... Um, you mean this one? Yeah, hey, maybe, maybe we'll see Kid Chameleon come back, though, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? <sighs> no. What? What do you mean, no? I never played it. Okay, I'm going to say something. When I had the Nintendo, it was all about Mario and a few other games. When it came yeah. to the Sega, 
eighty percent of the games were Sonic. The other percent were like the Lion King, the Disney game, Battletoads, and everything else. I never played that game. I never got to yeah. touch it because it was never available in the video game store. So, so I don't want it. So Craig Stitt, Craig Stitt, when he was on the show again last year, um, he he related the story that uh, this is why I, I think it'd be cool to see Kid Chameleon make a comeback because I would love to see the IP that you know one of our guests, Craig, when he came on, just. When he talked about the passion that they put into that game and the effort that they put in the game, like they really honestly thought that 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 Kid Chameleon could have been the mascot for Sega, and then Sonic comes and just kind of like blindsides them, and uh, and they're like, okay, all right, this is going to end up becoming the mascot. There's no way, there's no way that this this character Sonic isn't going to become the mascot. But but to, to you know I, to to at least have. I think that there was a lot of potential in Kid Chameleon. There's a lot of similarities to uh, Mario Brothers uh, in terms of the style mm-hmm. of platform that it was. He had different abilities that he could get by, you know, getting different items and things like that, kind of like the different suits in Super Mario Brothers. So I, I would like to see, uh, I would like to see, it's a shame that that game never got a sequel because I think it's a game where they could have iteratively refined on it and just made it progressively better and better and better. Kind of like Mario and Sonic have become progressively better and better and they're different. Maybe, maybe that's why he's not the mascot because he was too similar to Mario, and they said, "Nah, we want something cuter, something, something cuter, like like a little cat or a little dog or something." I don't know. They they the the attitude of Sonic, right, is supposedly what they uh, what they really like because he wasn't he wasn't like Mario. Yeah, he was different. Yep. So uh, Amadeus says, "Outrun demands a sequel." Uh, yes. Comic Zone, yeah, that's another good one, Turf. You're absolutely right. Comic Zone would be kind of cool to see uh, come back. And comics themselves imply that they're episodic and that they're ongoing. Um, so, um, if you guys can think of other Sega IPs and stuff that you'd like to see uh, make a comeback, drop well, them down in there in the chat. Well, in America, we got this. Japan got three of them, which is kind of messed up here because. These are the ones we got here. Yeah. But Japan got like three different of these with all different games. Like you had um, Thunder Thunderblade. You had Fantasy Zone Two. Poyo Poyo. I hate Poyo Poyo. That game is hard. <laughs> of course, Ultra Beast is on here. Galaxy Force Two is on here. And apparently, you can unlock two more games. And they had that dumb little bunny. Someone someone told me that little bunny. That little Playboy bunny was supposed to originally be Sega's mascot too, but he got kicked to the side. So no, nope, no, nope, you're too much like a Playboy bunny. Playboy bunny. My goodness, my goodness. Oh yeah, Power Drift. We need Power Drift back. So on on the same subject, I think this is the 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 final bit of Sega specific news that we have this week. Um, Tech Toy actually started shipping out this week. <laughs> they're shipping out the um, <laughs> Tech Toy this week is shipping out the Sega Genesis consoles. Uh, to folks in South America. Um, so the I, new, for folks that didn't know about this, the, the old school Sega Genesis con- console is getting uh, upgraded and relaunched in South America, certain sections of South America. And uh, it includes an SD card slot, so you can play games from the cartridge or you can play games from the SD card. And in the announcement today, they also related that uh, the Sega Genesis console can actually receive updates via that SD card slot. Oh, no, I'm so happy. I have a friend in Brazil. He said he's he's going over there. So if all goes well, I should get one because I knew I was going to get one. If I didn't get one, I was going to kick someone's fucking ass. Because if I didn't get one, <laughs> I was going to cry. <laughs> I don't care about your NES Classic. Don't take the Sega from me. Yeah, yeah. So now, folks, just just as a heads up. So from what I understand, it's it's the same size. It's got the same deal in terms of the headphone slot and all that kind of stuff uh, of the original. Uh, however, you can't use the Sega CD or 32X attachments with it. Mm. So, but you can play games from cartridge. I think it includes a couple games out of box. I don't, I don't quite remember if that's the case or not. Don't quote me on it. And it was a little bit dodgy because everything that I've read so far have been American translations of a Bra- of a Brazilian uh, article. So uh, I don't speak that language natively. So um, I might not have all the details, but. Uh, we'll try to find a link uh, to the latest uh, news, and we'll post that down in the doodly doo after the show for you guys to kind of check out yourself and dig up. I'm sure these things are going to end up on eBay, and you're going to be able to import them. 
Um, en español, por favor. <laughs> although, although, uh, since we're on the Sega topic, I'll show, uh, there are quite a few shows where I didn't show any pickups. I'm not going to show all the pickups and everything, but I am going to show this one because it's related to our news and what we just talked about. I managed to pick up this yesterday. Nice. Ooh. So I've already had, this is my third Sega Genesis Model 1 that I have, but um, this is my first uh, Sega CD unit there. So um, that's pretty cool. And what's really awesome is it's actually in pretty good, uh, it's actually in pretty good condition. So um, it does work. It does load up games. Um, I got it from a, a gentleman that lives in um, Silicon Valley. So, um, and I got it for about the price oh, that um, it's really hard to find Sega CDs working on eBay. You'll find a ton mm -hmm. of broken ones or untested. Folks, if it's untested and they have all the cables and everything for it, assume it's broken. Like, don't, if it works, great, awesome, and you can get it for, like, a good price, whatever. But um, I've seen known broken Sega CDs, just the Sega CD uh, mm -hmm. attachment. Uh, going for like, you know, 80 bucks or whatever. I got the console and the Sega CD. Didn't have any of the cables, but I got them for, for 80 bucks, which I thought was a decent. What's that? I was say, have you plugged them all in yet just to get the Absolutely. I loaded, cables? I loaded up Double <laughs> Switch for it because um, I, I already have all uh, the cables. I already have all the cables. Um, so uh, I have the power cables and everything for it. It, it, takes, it takes a Sega Genesis Model 1 power adapter. So, and I have two because I have a bunch of the consoles already. So uh, I plugged it all up, fired it up. Plus the guy that I bought it from worked for like one of the big companies here. I don't remember which one off the top of my head. but So he, he clearly makes enough money to where he doesn't need to rip me off by selling me a broken console. He told me that it worked, that it was his second console. Um, you know, he assured me that, that I wouldn't have any problems with it. So once I found out where he worked, I'm like, I trust you. <laughs> you, you. You make enough money to where you don't need... You don't need to sell me a, a Sega CD under false pretenses to make money. So, and sure, sure enough, I brought it home. It's in really good shape. Fired right up the first time. No CD skipping problems. So, um, they do exist. They are out there, and the price was pretty Ooh. fair. So, I actually have a, a Sega CD, but I got tired of always, you know, big old power blocks everywhere. So I actually traded Maximo for some stuff and give it to him. So, folks, I'm glad that you mentioned that. I ordered one, but I don't have I don't have it yet. Hopefully, it arrives in the next week or two. I'm going to review it, and I'll let you guys know on the show whether it's worth it or not. Um, there is a company in France that actually custom makes uh, adapters. You mm -hmm. plug a single adapter into your wall, and it's got three uh, cords on it. It is specifically made to power your 32X, Sega CD, and Sega Genesis all at the same time from the same power supply. Interesting. So, what's the for me? Especially I hate it, it's CD. <laughs> I'll give it a try. If it fries it, I'll let you know. If it works fantastic, I'll let you know. Anybody that's having problems with, you know, they've got too much console and not enough uh, wall outlets for, for plugging them all in, this would definitely help with that. So that's really my only complaint with the 32X and Sega CD. I think they don't get anywhere near as much love as they should. They're actually fantastic consoles and peripherals. The gaming library for Sega CD is kind of hit and miss. For 32X, I have yet to play a bad game on the 32X. So I'm, I'm convinced that anybody that talks shit about the 32X hasn't actually played it. Yeah, man. So I agree with uh, I agree with you, Amadeus. I love the look. I love the look of the Model One. That is just a sexy console, especially the the original Model One where it had high definition graphics across the top. Have that? That's that's pretty sexy. So not all the Model Ones do. Um, but uh, yeah, that's stuck back there. So Lister's mate asked if it has an SD card slot. Uh, he's talking about the Sega Genesis that's coming out in Brazil. Uh, it should be able to play MP3s and look at pictures as well. I I don't know. I'm not sure about that. You can check some of the links that we'll include uh, down in the description after we're done with the live show. Um, not really sure. Can't say one way or the other. Um, in terms of the uh, the title, you guys kind of know. We're gonna jump ship now from Sega Genesis over to uh, Nintendo side of the house of news. Um, you folks saw the title. You know, Hyperkin does what Nintendo. And what that's in reference to is Nintendo recently announced that uh, they were so shocked 
um, and 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 overwhelmed and, and just happy with the success of the NES Mini that they have decided to stop producing anymore. Because uh, yeah. that's what a company does when you have a amazing, you know, flash in the pan surprise success product. Um, you 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 stop producing it and tell people, you know, thank you, I'll but go, no. I'll convince Nintendo hates money. <laughs> they, Nintendo doesn't want my money. So, but Retron, right? Hyperkin does want your money, and so they have actually they're releasing May twenty fifth for forty bucks. It's called the Retron HD, and uh, mm -hmm. it's a console that is um, it's basically a Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, it only takes the NES cartridges. It's only formatted for the American uh, form factor. But um, I'm gonna try to see if I can get my hands on one, and I will tell you guys if it works with a Famicom adapter. So, um, cool. So we'll we'll find out. My guess is that it will because uh, a lot of people are asking, is this emulation? Is this FPGA? Like, what is this? And Hyperkin hasn't really released a whole lot of details. Here are the things that we do know about it so far, uh, folks. For forty bucks, there's no way in hell it's an FPGA because that would not even buy you the processor. So it's not FPGA. You can take that to the bank. I don't have any insider info. I'm just going on raw economics here. So it can't possibly be an FPGA. Not only that, if it only has one cartridge slot, it'd be a complete waste to have something as powerful as an FPGA just basically being a Nintendo entertainment system. So I also don't think that it's emulation because there are things that are going to be missing from it, like uh, save states. Uh, the game only saves if your game saves. And so I think the logistics that'd be involved in having an emulator and having it manage save states with the cartridge uh, would be ridiculously difficult and then to not include save state or other features like filters and everything just doesn't make any sense so I think what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a system on a chip design similar to previous ones but the output uh, has been redone so that they can kick out 720p HD visuals so that's that's what I'm saying you know doubling down final answer I think that's what you're gonna find so system on a chip. Now that said, anybody that might be going, oh, system on a chip, what the hell? They have confirmed on the Hyperkin page specifically that games that have been known previously to have issues with system on a chip, like Castlevania 3, they swear up and down Castlevania 3 plays on this just fine. So I've got it. Ooh. We'll try it. We'll, I've got Castlevania 3. I'll try to get my hands on a Retron HD, and I will let you guys know if the claims are for realsies, and uh, we will let you know what we find out. Yay! <laughs> so, what do you what do you guys think of the Retron uh, HD? I think it's a good. I think it's good for folks that uh, you know maybe wanted an NES Mini, have NES games in the attic or something. But uh, you know, I think it's got to be able to hook them up. Nintendo's want to make more. <laughs> well, I have to make the money off it. Yeah, I, I think personally the reason that they're not doing it, I mean, they mentioned before that it was going to be like limited quantities. I can only think of two legit reasons why Nintendo would would not want this money. Uh, one of them is they sold two million in like practically instantly, right? And they couldn't they couldn't kick them out fast enough. I, I think that this system had a real chance of outselling the Switch, and I think that would have been devastating for Nintendo, given the amount of time and money that they've sunk in that console, that they could have just made this one-off thing and made buckets more money. So I think this is a way to... Thanks. <laughs> make, sure, make sure you put the tourniquet on that thing before the investors realize, wait a minute. People want yeah. retro gaming? They're crazy. <laughs> you could have spent this much and made this much, and instead you spent this much and you're only making this much? So, yeah, so I think that that's probably part of it, right? Not wanting to cannibalize Switch sales and stuff like that, especially virtual console sales on the Switch when that launches because they've kind of mentioned that they have this plan for, you know, subscription-based virtual gaming on, on the console. So um, if you just play them all on the NES Mini, why not? So if anything, NES Mini was probably a way for them to spur and gauge interest in these retro games so that they can bring them back on the Switch this fall during... Christmas season. So, so I was here to throw games back. So I was like, yeah, hey, virtual store. Yeah, yeah. So um, that that's that's why I think I think the other thing is um, how easily these things got cracked and ripped open, and people were r running pirate ROMs on them and everything. If Nintendo <laughs> can't secure the platform, 
right? They didn't they didn't build it so that people could have a whole bunch of like you know sixty dollar Raspberry Pi boxes. Um, they they did it so that they could make money off some of their IPs. And I stuff. think it was the first week they had corrected stupid things and got sixty games on them. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I'm not going to that. So I I think those are the two reasons. Yeah. Um, so off of that, I did want to mention too. Um, this is also Nintendo related news. Shantae, half genie hero, the Ooh. new game. Yeah. So it's coming um, to the Switch. Yep, coming to the Nintendo Switch. So she's already on the other platforms, PlayStation Four and Xbox. But I think it's good that she's also going to be on the Switch because I know a lot of folks that own a Switch that don't own the other consoles. Um, Nintendo households. You know, it's either one of the consoles that you also have or only have, I'm noticing. Mm-hmm. So. I'm the opposite. I own them all but the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? For now, that's not hurting you because Breath of the Wild on the Wii U is practically... Hurts my ego. <laughs> hurts your ego, but uh, helps your wallet, my friend. Because my friend's like, oh, you know, Jeremy has all the systems like, well, we the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're just waiting till they work out all the hardware issues, my friend. Trust that me. That too, because after what you and Tyler went through, I was like, I can't wait. Yeah, it's yeah, not, I'm waiting too. Yeah, I I think my biggest disappointment, honestly, with Zelda Breath of the Wild has not been that it's a bad game because it's a good game. Um, it's that as a swan song for the Wii U, it's incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. As the launch title for the Switch, to me, it's incredibly disappointing. Um, the, the game shouldn't be locking up and freezing when I'm in the middle of battles with like one enemy, right? Things like I that. I had an like, issue on the Wii U. Mine's only yeah. multiple enemies near me when I start lagging. So, well, there's some reports online that what it appears to be is that the Wi-Fi module inside the the Switch, occasionally when it transmits information to Nintendo for whatever reason, if it does that when you're in the middle of certain combat scenes. Uh, that burst of network activity appears to be what's stealing just enough CPU away from the switch to actually cause the lag. So, uh, folks, if you are experiencing, like, and I'm not talking, like, lag. I'm talking, like, literally the game freezes for a good two to three seconds uh, while you're in combat. It's very, very disruptive to the game. Um, if you're experiencing that, try turning off your Wi-Fi while you're playing it and see if that improves it. A lot of folks have said that it improves it. I just heard this trick today, so I'll try it this week and let you guys know next week if that if that helps me out. There's also the bat method where you just beat the shit out of the switch and say, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I dropped the F word. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and there we go. We've now officially hit the uh, the the upper level of our... Um, I told them I dropped the F word <laughs> the day. XP Coin says, spyware confirmed. I don't know if it's spyware. Um, it, you're right, it probably is. Um, maybe like usage stats, right? Like how, I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're checking for updates in the background or, or something you like that. You know, you know they're monitoring you. Speaking of spyware, just a general warning, there's a huge ransomware uh, malware going around right now, so be careful what emails you open up. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, oh. Something cries malware, so it's really bad. Yes. Yes, there's you know, a ransomware is ransomware is pretty much they'll lock your computer up and they'll charge you Bitcoin to unlock your computer, which is not cool. Yeah, yeah. If they, if they'll lock up uh, certain family members of mine, if they'll lock up their computers so they can't get into them again, I'll actually pay them money to keep it locked. So there's there's some there's some friends and family I could do without getting email from. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> If they're watching the show, nothing but love, guys. Nothing but love. Um, I love a Am right now. <laughs> Amadeus said there's pretty much only one design of the Nintendo uh, on a chip, which has issues. Um, mm -hmm. Unless they make their... And it has issues. Uh, unless they make their own Nintendo on a chip. Uh, Hyperkin has uh, made their own Nintendo on a chips uh, before. They have made alterations before. Um, and this is what's enabled them to play other games that have been known to have issues like Super Mario RPG and things like that. So Hyperkin tweaking the design of the Nintendo on a chip or swapping out certain components to avoid known issues would not be, this would not be the first time that they've done that. So I, I would say that this is still solidly in the realm of possibility for the Retron HD. So um, 
Lister's mate backs up. Yeah, um, too many packets over Wi-Fi can cause any PC, no matter what it is, to to lock up if it's not fast enough to process it. So this this looks like exactly, at least from um, um, what some of these folks and these other um, articles and stuff that I've read have basically said that they they need uh, something that run in QC before they release it. What's that? Quality control. That's something you think they run into in quality control. Is it's lagging when it's saying all your wife information. You know, I, I yeah, I mean, I, and I guess that, that I, I need to qualify, right? Like, I'm not necessarily disappointed in in um, Breath of the Wild per se. I, I really most of my disappointments, I guess, are with the the console itself. Um, there, there's a lot of aspects of the console that just kind of reek of quality control not being what we're used to with Nintendo. So, um, you know, if the Wi-Fi is causing, like, really bad game-breaking lag, um, that that's something they should have caught. Like, my, my controller shouldn't be dropping sync constantly. Like, it, I'm going to have to get in. I didn't send the left one in, but here, here's why I didn't send the left one in. My right one even cuts out. Like, and the right one will cut out so bad. I haven't seen anybody else having these problems, right? The right one will cut out so bad that I have to physically power off the console, power it back <laughs> on, and I have to force repair the, 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 the controller to the console. It's very, very annoying. I have issues with uh, sometimes I'll turn on, I'll go into the, the store, mm -hmm. um, and, and it'll be, I'll get this DNS error. I thought it was a one-time thing a couple weeks ago. You have to physically also power down the console completely and power it back on to get it to, to, to just load up the store again. Um, so I'm I'm waiting to see how many issues. Like, I don't I don't want to like play it a couple of times and maybe I'm doing something dumb as a, as a user, right? Like connecting to a Wi-Fi spot that's got like one bar or something, and then I'm complaining. I don't want to be that guy. Um, the other thing too is I don't. I don't want to send back this thing a piece at a time. Oh, now now fix the left controller. Oh, now fix the right controller. Oh, now what's wrong with the Wi-Fi? I, I kind of want to see how many of these other problems surface. And then if I have to send the whole thing back, I just back everything up to an SD card, swallow it, and send the whole thing back. So, um, But in the meantime, it is kind of making for a somewhat... Uh, a somewhat frustrating experience. I, I definitely have buyer's remorse of being an early adopter of the Switch because I, I wasn't aware Thanks that I was. Thanks to you, I wasn't one. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Man, I didn't get one either. So I, I feel like I, I bought the privilege of beta testing their console for its release in 2018. Honestly, is you what took I feel the like. grenade for the rest of us. Just to go that way. <laughs> I did. I did. I saw that grenade and I just dove onto it. I'm like, I'll take it. I'll take it. So, uh, but that said, I, I do need to point out that there are plenty of people. I know uh, a bunch of people that I work with not having any issues with it. You know, everything's just fine. So it could be, you know, it could very well just be that there were bad batches and, and things like that. So this is what you do. You bring your two joy cons, hide in your pocket, go to your, your buddy's house. He's not looking to switch them out. <laughs> no, no. I'm Dash V. I cannot tell a lie. I cannot do that. I'll do it for you. So, so I did want to I did want to throw out there, folks. Um, uh, an interesting thing happened this week. Uh, Sanctuary, uh, Sanctuary RPG. They, they're at symbol Sanctuary RPG on Twitter. Um, they have an ASCII art uh, RPG game that is um, available on. It's a text based uh, adventure game. So they give you different choices and you pick the choice. But all the graphics are also in text. So. Um, they use text and special characters and symbols to, to give portraits of the people and of the environment and that kind of stuff. Um, anyway, they were mm -hmm. doing a giveaway, and, and they're still doing different giveaways, uh, where they're, they're posting different questions on their Twitter feed, and uh, they're collecting up responses to the questions, and they pick the response that they like the most, and if they like your response, they give you a Steam key for a free copy of the game. Um, it is, it's really cool, and it's totally legit. Uh, I was just being a smart ass this week. One of the questions that they asked was if you could invite any video game character over to dinner, uh, which one would you invite? And I totally cheated. I said I would invite, um, you know, uh, I would invite um, the genie from Disney's Aladdin um, <laughs> for the Sega Genesis. And then my first wish would be that every other video game character was at the dinner That's table with us. <laughs> so I ended up, I ended up winning. Um, 
had they said, "Hey, you can't pick that," I would have I would have probably went with like a basic answer like Laura Croft or something like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, why why have dinner with one of your favorite video game characters when you can have dinner with all of your favorite video game characters? So mm -hmm. apparently they agreed because they sent me a Steam key. And, but they're still doing my my purpose in bringing that up at the Sanctuary RPG number one. I love text-based RPGs. I think that they're really, really neat. They're really creative. They use the best graphics processor in the world, which is your brain and your imagination. So um, mm -hmm. I used to love playing those games on Commodore 64 and things like that. So, um, so it's, good, it's good to see that there's still games in that genre coming out. So check it out. Um, even if you don't buy it, maybe post some responses to their to their Twitter posts and maybe a win free Steam key. Yeah, that works for you, a free Steam key. Yeah. Take a play. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, picks of the week. Do we have picks of the week this week? Yes. Yes. So okay, y'all go first. Goldeneye in 64. Me and my brother, and that's how many broken N64 controls came about, too, to that game. <laughs> nice. Nice. So I used to get pissed when he beat me, so I had to do the controller. <laughs> so, was that your first game for the N64? Was it? Um, I don't think so. I think um, Mario 64 was my first one, and um, walking out of time. Eventually, okay. I got it. Then. Okay, so so Goldeneye compared to Mario 64. I'll take um, Goldeneye every time. All right, Goldeneye compared to Macarena of Time. I think that's Ocarina because it's just bigger. More to okay, do. so better than Mario, but not better than Zelda. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Any, Fair any, enough. Any, they also throw Smash Brothers in there, then it's getting complicated. <laughs> well, I don't want to complicate things, so we won't go there. Uh, Lizzie, what's your pick of the week? Well, my pick of the week, and you also mean like things we got this week, right? Your like any pick pickups? Of retro pick of the week. Oh, this okay. Is, yeah, we might have time for pickups, but this is your retro pick of the week. Okay. I am still going back in time. I'm collecting Sega IPs that I been like ignoring and I'm happy to find this is Super Monkey Ball and I think it's super cute but as you can see it requires either the balance board or you need the Wii remote but it's pretty much a cute little game it's got like 20 party games you know little little puzzle games and you can do co-op or play by yourself but I mean I'm really trying to collect like past past AIPs from like the Wii and the Wii U that I just neglected. But yeah, this is another part of my little Sega collection. <laughs> A game that I may or may not play actually, because it requires actual exercising. So maybe maybe you know? they'll bring back Monkey Ball as one of their IP revivals, huh? Yeah, just just to troll me and say, We're gonna troll Liz since so, so she's buying these games and she's not actually playing them, we're gonna purposely bring them back. <laughs> Super Monkey Ball HD. I could see that. Yeah, yeah. So my game, uh, kind of sticking with the Sega CD theme, uh, my retro uh, pick of the week is Hook for the Sega CD. Um, this is a solid. Oh, the movie. Uh, yeah, it's based on the it's based on the movie. Um, they actually had a um, they had a three D render uh, model of uh, Hook's uh, ship in the game, which was pretty cool. There wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of 16-bit games that had 3D rendered graphics, so um, that was pretty cool. Um, the platforming action is pretty solid on it. The music is pretty good. Um, this is definitely, if you own a Sega CD, uh, or if you're one of the folks mm -hmm. that's made the comment that there were no good games for the Sega CD, um, bullshit, you haven't played this game. So I'm not going to say that it's like the best game of all time or anything crazy like that, but it's a solid game that if you do have a Sega CD or want to get the Sega CD a fair shake, um, this is something worth picking up for. So there was a version of Hook that came out for the uh, for the Genesis, but this this is better than that in every way. Sounds awesome. I should have a play a sword from this weekend with my nephew, my brother. Yeah. Um, my brother wanted to play Smash Brothers, and my nephew's four; he's never played it. So um, he, he was watching his plays. I like, cannot play. So I had to control my controller. Like, you want to play, Daddy? He's like, Yeah. My brother smashed him. He was so pissed off. My poor nephew. The like, daddy stop killing me. And I was just laughing. I was just like crying. It was so funny. 
Yeah, you sound just like me though when I lost to him. I was like, you're a lot like your uncle there. <laughs> <laughs> so XP Coin says that he picked up the last official uh, UK PlayStation magazine, new in the bag from 2004. That's actually impressive. Some bag since 2004. That is that is pretty impressive. Um, we already saw my pickup, the the Sega Genesis Model One and the Sega CD. Uh, Lizzie, did you have any pickups this week? Yeah, well, I got my gamer block arrived today, and I'm so happy. Which what the heck is the little box? Thing? Okay, I'm very happy they've arrived, and the theme apparently was a Legend of Zelda theme. Like apparently, it was mostly Link in here. And some really awesome items were in here, which I will gladly show y'all here. Nice. As, yes, as usual, I'm mostly keeping the t-shirts because I don't know anyone who, other than that's, me, who can wear this. That's totally But this up. is... <laughs> <laughs> but I got the shirt. Second is and an item... And it's Sonic from... Blue. Yes, but it's, it's, it's still Legend of Zelda. Yeah. But it's cute. Um, I, I got this. this is... Okay, well, yeah, well, he's behind me. What am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> but I got this. This is from Portal 2. I nice. haven't haven't opened it yet, and it's sealed, so I don't know which one's inside. I, I actually don't want that, so I'll either give it away, or we can give it away as a giveaway or something. I don't know. I think that's the one that takes it. There you go. They have to, they have to fight me for it. You want it? They have to fight me for it. I got this really cool mug. Oh, that glass. is really it, cool. I like that. I like this a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's got like all these cute little characters on it. And it's GPA free. So you don't have to worry about getting, you know, cancer. So that's awesome. All right. I may or not have this. I, I don't know. Another is... um. Collapsible side window shade, and it's the Legend of Zelda. It's the theme, or the yeah, the Legend of Zelda symbol. If you don't want that, I'll take. As you can see, same two of them. Yeah, if you don't want that, I'll take that. <laughs> oh that? golly, they smell. They smell funky. It's that because they're <laughs> brand new. Oh gosh, and the little things just popped off, but they're in here. Yeah, and then I got a Super Mario Three poster. Oh, nice. What's this look like? I'm curious. Yeah, I like the last Marjorie. Uh, and apparently it's from the old My Road thing. Oh, that yeah. is a wonderful poster. Wow. Yeah, so this was in here. And then the last thing is in here. I bad. have no idea. You can't buy a single arcade box, can you? You, well, you can after it's released on the website. They'll say, hey, we had this item in there if you want to buy it. And and you you can get it. I know what was also in here is this. This is a Steam game, Fragments of Him, and apparently it did pretty well because it's got all this little stuff here. I don't really want it, so if anybody wants this, just let me know. What the? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, the Zelda thing. It's like you call me stinky, I will attack you. Yeah. Let's say it's not gonna happen to you. You're, you're possessed. That the the smell that's on there. It's the it's the soul of a moblin that. Oh God! Yeah. Not successfully is. managed to one hit kill me. So no shirtless links. No. <laughs> if anybody wants this, it's from Sassy Bot or something like that. I don't know. This game. It's a it's an indie game. It's an indie game, but. Oh, okay. I don't really want this. If anybody wants to, just let me know, and go. I'll, I'll give you the code. And then what I decide to keep, I'll keep. What I don't want, I'll let I'll let people know. Hey, I'm gonna give this away because I don't want it. Because next month I'm really happy. I still saw it. Uh, next month is um. Where are you? Ace Combat. No, next month is Run, and as you can tell, it's gonna be Sonic. And I have two pre-ordered. Because I don't know what's in there, but I want two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, looking forward to next month. It's that's Sonic. So, now, what, what will you do? What will you do if the arcade black arrives and all that's in there is, like, Amy Rose and Knuckles stuff? Well, 
I guess it's okay. <laughs> well, the boxes are the same thing, too. Well, well, my niece, who's like six years old, she's like, no, she's five. She really likes Amy Rose because she's been watching Sonic Boom. So yeah. I'll probably give it to her. Knuckles, I'll give them randomly to some people. I mean, Knuckles isn't so bad. It's just, come on. I mean, it, it has to be him or else I don't want him. Totally. Sonic's Sock, always been a jealous time anyway. There you go. <laughs> so... Folks, that's pretty much our show for today. I think we're uh, we're finishing up early unless uh, anybody's got anything else that they want to throw out there. It's really hot tonight in Texas. <laughs> All right, folks, it's hot tonight in Texas, so watch out. Although there are some uh, there are some activities that have recently gone down in Texas, weren't wasn't there? Yeah, Con yeah, Con Belusa just happened this past weekend. A whole bunch of cool um, actors and people were here. The voice actors of Kim Possible, Ron Stoppable were here. The Power Ranger That's people cool. were here. Did you go to Comic-Con? So much cool stuff. No, no, I could not go um, because my sister moved and she needed me to babysit her kids. So I couldn't go. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, you know, I, if you'd let me know, I would have. I could have had Amazon overnight you some duct tape and you still could have gone to Comic Palooza. Or, um, that would have been awesome. Face, on FaceTime, we could watch them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <That's> okay. <laughs> How's it going? Look, this is Mario. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't go toward the stove. Nope, nope. Don't. To oh, this is gonna be bad. Oh, this is oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends. Friends, don't let you know the retro reload podcast babysit their children. Yeah, man. So doesn't doesn't happen. So, all right, folks. I think that's it for today's show. Um, definitely check out, uh, like we mentioned, check out Sanctuary RPG if you want to try to you know follow them on Twitter and check out some of their latest posts. They're doing a couple of uh, contests and everything. Other freebie things to look out for. Um, this was the case at least as of a couple days ago. Um, they were giving out the um, Gunvolt. DLC content for Blaster Master Zero for free Ooh. on the Nintendo eShop for the Switch. I don't know why Nintendo... I really don't like their design of the eShop for the Switch. Like, if a game is not the most popular or a recent release, currently the only way that you can find it in the eShop is to search for it. So if you do have Blaster Master Zero and you go into the eShop and you search for Blaster Master, right? You can pull it up, you go into it, and then you can see that it has DLC. And, you know, it, it may or may not this week, I think this was the last week that they were doing it, um, show up as free. After that, I don't know if it's going to be like $2, $3, whatever, um, but it's a whole new character for Blaster Master Zero. There are different power-ups and abilities for that character, um, so it's, it's more than just a skin. So definitely check it out, especially if you've already purchased Blaster Master Zero, if you were an early adopter on that. Check it out now. This is probably going to be, if it's still available, um, I think you only have a couple days left. So grab it while you can for free. Um, that's your reward is like early adopting. Nintendo, if you're listening, what, what the hell? You should have a category in there where I can see newly released DLC for Blaster Master Zero because I only found out about it by accident. I was going through the shop wondering when the new DLC was going to drop. I couldn't find Blaster Master Zero. I did a search for it. It came up. And then I saw that there's this DLC that's been out for like three or four weeks and that it was free. So what what the hell? It was kind of a sleeper thing. So hopefully Nintendo does some stuff to kind of tweak and tune the eShop and the layout to make it more obvious. Um, I'm hoping to not have the same problem with Zelda because I did buy the season pass to Zelda. Um, I don't want to find out like, you know, two months later that the DLC has been out for two months and you know, I'm sure it's Zelda. So they'll do something to promote it. But I, I think even third parties, you know, to, uh, releasing for their platform, they're taking a risk. They're taking a gamble. Nintendo help them out, elevate, elevate their stuff a bit so that they get a bit more exposure. So um, I, I, I fail to believe that one, two switch is the second most popular game on the console. <laughs> so. I mean, bought that thing for that much money. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe a lot more people want to get drunk at their friend's house. Um, maybe it's all a show. It's all Tyler's idea. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe maybe a lot more people want to get drunk at their friend's house and eat fake sandwiches and milk fake cows than what I think. But... <laughs> I 
Okay. All right. So, folks, tune in next Tuesday. We're going to have some more interesting topics for you. We'll cover the news between now and then. So if you've got any topics that you want us to cover, uh, drop us a message down in the doodly-doo. Um, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, hear us talk about uh, – talk about the dreamcast we can talk about the dreamcast if you want to hear us talk about uh sega cd we can talk about the sega cd um let us know what you're looking for and uh you know we'll see if we can accommodate so until then take care